Hello again, and welcome to Artist Review. It's the fact it's leap year. This day only comes once, what is every four years, huh? What a great deal. But we have an artist who's leaping into the present. And as you know, uh, we love to bring artists to you on the last Wednesday of the month. Uh, we've, uh, for those who don't know, we used to do this as a substitute for our restaurant show when a restaurant didn't show up. But it became so popular, we fixed it on the last Wednesday of the month. And this way, uh, we get a lot more opportunity for our artists. Today, we're real pleased to have a young gentleman here bringing his art. His name is Kenneth Scott, Jr., and he's a painter and artist. Welcome to the show, Kenneth. Thank you very much, Bob. I'm pleased to be here. Now. Oh, very, it's nice of you to say that. Now, we rehearsed that statement about five minutes ago, so <laughs> he's very good about that. Now, Ken, tell us, you know, my first question, whether you're a chef, or artist, or musician, is always, because we love our natives. Uh, are you a native? Were you born here? Yes, sir. All right. You got a plus already, so people are keeping score. And after that, let's talk about, more importantly, uh, when did you first get interested in art? Um and how, if you, can, if you can remember that far back? Well, Bob, I started painting in, I would say, three, four years old. Wow. And, and how did that come about? Did you just pick well, up a brush? I, I would probably say it's just a, a natural, God-given talent that, I, that I've kind of honed, honed in on. Um, but did you have, like, paint brushes and all at your house when that happened? Or how did that, do you recall yeah, that far back? My, ex, my my father actually worked at the VA hospital, and um, uh -huh. they would always have like little paint kits and of stuff course. he would, he would kind of bring home. Of course. So he would always bring that stuff home for me to kind of doodle with or, or play with. Right. Uh, so your supplies were there, and one day you just picked it up. Yes, sir. That's excellent, excellent. And you've been painting ever since? Yep. Okay. Now, um, have you worked in different mediums, or has it all been always the same uh Oil or acrylic? How has it? How has that come? It's it's been acrylic, acrylic majority in my life since the beginning. Okay, yeah. great. Now, uh, of course, a lot of our uh, presenters on here today, I meet at different art marts. People love to uh, be able to see more than either sometimes uh, additional works that we don't show today, or sometimes see it in the flesh. So the first thing we need to do is, I know you do have a website. Let's go over that. And our director will put on the screen so if it, and tell us, uh, you know, like, are all these paintings on or different paintings are on or, or what, so they can know. So what's the website for you? Um, my website is www.halofineart.com. And basically everything you're going to see here is actually on the site. Excellent. So it's Halo Fine Art, all one word. So I don't... Uh, Put any dashes or underscores. That's great. Now, in addition to that, um, do you have anything um, hanging in the gallery now or will be shortly? And or any other uh, event, uh, art festival, something you'll be showing so once again people can come meet you and actually see the works up close? Yeah, actually I do. I actually have a group show now hanging on um, Julia Street. It's actually um, M. Francis Gallery. Okay. That's a group show and I also have a solo show later on in the year. Okay, um, the group show lasts until how long? Um, um, it's actually up now. Um, it opened last month, and I want to say it'll probably end at the end of the, the, this month. Coming. So today? You think it's early as today? Because remember, days into February. Did it open in early, beginning February? Yes, it did. So it'll probably change by Saturday, because that's usually when the new once a month on the first Saturday, I, be, I believe so. Okay, so, so it's going to be difficult for you all to rush out this afternoon to see that particular show. How about uh, any of our festivals and all art markets? Do you uh, participate in that? Is there anything in March that you might have that people can go see in the flesh? Actually, yes. Um, I will be doing the old Algiers River Fest. Ah, when is that? Um, that is actually March 31st and April 1st. Okay, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Where do they do that in Algiers? Do you know? They actually do it right there on, um, right by the levee, right Cadre across from the courthouse. Well, that's where most of their festivals are because it's so easy for people to get off the ferry and go there, whether it's the music festivals or anything they have. So great. So that's the last weekend in March and the first Sunday in April, huh? Yes. Excellent. That's correct. Okay. All right, folks. That way you've gotten to hear, you've gotten to know where to see them in real and also on the uh, Internet if you don't catch the show or you want to tell someone else about it. Uh, of course, you know, it show, this show repeats three more times, and hopefully by now you are familiar with those repeats. But let's go ahead and now and start taking a look, and we're fortunate to have our first piece sitting here magnificently between us. 
So we're going to ask our lovely cameraman to go ahead and zero in on that, zoom in for us. And why don't we start? It's a very recognizable figure for us natives. So tell us what, what this is, please, uh, Ken. Okay, this is the actual painting for the official 2011 Congo Square poster. It's oh. an original piece. Um, it is acrylic on canvas. Okay, and who's the, do you know who the featured um, um, that year, musician is that? That's actually Fats Houston. Okay. He, he grand marshaled many second lines. Many of the second line, huh? Yeah, so he has a rich, rich, diverse history. So you were fortunate to be selected, and of course, as everyone knows, and people know about posters, uh, most posters come from an original piece first. So the, the artist usually maintains that for his or her collection, or sometimes if the bucks are there, we'll go ahead and release it. But let's talk about a little bit more about specifics on the size of this piece. Uh, and uh, so we're saying it's acrylic. For those who don't know what acrylic is versus uh, oil, let's, uh, I have my idea, but why don't you go ahead and tell them real quickly uh, how that is. Well, acrylic is, is a, basically just a water-based paint. Um, it dries within a couple of minutes. Yeah, they, I think the real advantage to acrylics is the speed in drying as opposed to an oil that sometimes keeps paint, dripping and oozing for years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, Bob. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. Plus, I know that a lot of the colors oftentimes in acrylics can come out much more vividly than they can in, in uh, oil, no matter how, how well the artist is trained in making color. For some reason, overall, I think acrylics are always much more outstanding in, in that uh, brightness. Okay, and which size did you think this is, please? This is actually two by four. <coughs> two by what, please? Two by four feet. Okay. Now, uh, were posters made from this? Yes. And were they approximately the same size? Do you know or not? Honestly, they were actually slightly smaller, but the, those okay. are actually oversized posters, so okay. they're pretty big. Excellent. Well, great. Well, again, congratulations on the selection because it is a beautiful piece and you've got it framed just in a uh, it's not I know you've made a lot of your frames we'll be talking about that that just seems to be a normal frame a starboard frame is that what that is correct yeah to complement the color okay but let's go on and you're gonna see that um, Ken is very interested in our local notable musicians so a lot of these excuse me will be portraits of those folks and of course you know how collectible that is we all love to bring our musicians and our other memorabilia of New Orleans into our homes. So this is a great, great opportunity. So let's move on to number two, and here's going to be another figure. This one's of the past, unfortunately, but someone that we all know and love. His music lives on. And I believe if I'm, I'm not letting the can out of the bag, that that's Professor Longhair. Tell us about this can, please. You're right, Bob. That is Professor Longhair. Um, the title of this piece is called Professional. And it is a acrylic and gold leaf on canvas. Okay. And it, um, it measures about 30 by 30 inches. 30 by 30, it's great. And it's actually framed by myself. Okay, and how, what's the frame like when we pull back a little bit? Um, the frame is actually made of recycled um, cypress. Cypress, and you're doing it in what, like black to match the background? Is that what we got? Um, it's actually blue. Blue, it's actually okay. A, a, a I get a, blue. People know I don't. I can see now that you've said it, but I couldn't tell. But I'm very interested in the layers of color or the striations of color, where you've got the gold and the orange, and I know you said there's some gold leaf, and maybe that's what we're doing, but also the green and the other. First of all, talk a little bit about the colors themselves, and then let's talk about the gold leaf if that's not part of that same scenario. Well, I know this is gonna sound weird, Bob, but I usually let I usually try to listen to the artists, and I usually get, I basically, I get a color palette from the music that I'm listening to. Wow, that's so fabulous. Any type of music that I listen to, I actually get the color scheme from what I'm listening to. So. And have you been able to, like, track the pattern? Like, is there a pattern, like, green? Is that a particular type of song or note or something that, that would bring out green in you, or you, or you, each one is individualized? It's just individual, you know, just basically how I feel when I actually get the music and playing and I get the brush going. It kind of sets the mood for each piece. Well, I think this one is phenomenal because not that the piece without those color, color linear color features would, wouldn't stand alone, 
but I think it just brings a tremendous depth to it by adding the color to the almost black and white and black and gray look. Now, where are uh, you talked about gold leafing? For those who are not aware of how we all hear the term, and maybe someone doesn't know what's required, so let's uh, do Art 101 and tell them what is, how is gold leaf applied and whereabouts would you show that on this particular painting? Well, on this particular piece, it's used um, in its glasses, and it's also used around the edge of his glasses. And okay, so on the rim and also the top part or all throughout? All throughout. Okay. And um, I actually lay a color back over the gold leaf. And okay, also... So you put the gold leaf first and then color it on top? Yes, sir. And obviously his teeth are uh, gold leaf as well. Oh, really? I didn't... didn't. Okay, I, I don't see that, but that's just my eyes. Well, I can see now, I've seen the two of them barely at the bottom. So now, and what is the process of actually applying gold leaf? I have a pretty good understanding, but let's make sure, because it's not just painting uh, another material on, it's usually not painting at all. What do, what do you actually do to put gold leaf on something? Well, actually, the hand gilding process starts out with um, a substance called a size. It's like a clear liquid that actually dries tacky, it doesn't dry all the way. And then you basically apply thin sheets of metal on top of that That's and that actually that stickiness um, adheres the gold leaf to the surface. Right. And then the gold leaf is actually something that actually peels. It's almost like, I don't want to say foil, but it's something like a foil, very, very light foil, but it actually peels off in, exactly. in pieces that stays on there. Exactly. So, really cool. So this, uh, real, as I say, this is a tremendous dimension added to this portrait because by itself would stand alone, but I think the uh, putting the color and adding the leaf underneath it really brings out some interesting features on the uh, professor's face. So once again, a very notable artist that uh, we see, especially at Tepatinas and other places all around the city. Of course, we hear his music all the time. Uh, as you notice, our uh, director is put up by standard calls. So if you want to call and speak to myself or the artist, anything about his work or anything about the show, please don't hesitate to do that anytime during the uh, show and the director will pipe it on through. All right, let's go ahead and move to number two and take a look and see we're going to a completely different look on this particular painting. And wow, I'm, I'm hoping people recognize right away what this is, but I'm going to go ahead and let you explain what we have. Okay, this next piece is um, it's titled Big Chief Rudy. Okay. Um, it's actually a portrait of Big Chief Rudy, the late um, Big Chief Rudy Bagari. Bagari. Okay. Yes, he was the Big Chief of the Night War Hunters. All right, um, good. Because uh, uh, everyone knows uh, Mantana, but a lot of people don't know some of the other chiefs living in deceased. So he was in the Ninth Ward. And what, about how long ago, do you have any idea how long, how long ago he passed? He passed pre-Katrina. Before Katrina. Yes, so. sir. Okay. Let's talk about it. I love the, I, love, I mean, it, to me, again, folks, know I have bad eyes, but this almost looks like, other, than, especially from a distance where you really don't see the face as much until you get closer, it really looks like a giant thistle plant with the uh, three, the the feathers have that look of that thistle, like three thistles, it's hard to say, on a plant. And with the wonderful greens and yellow stripes in the back, let's talk about the costume. And uh, once again, you said it's acrylic. Talk about a little bit about the detail on the uh, costume. Well, I think he actually used, um, he actually used white animals on, on this piece. Oh, really? So Animal skins? Just um, just white animals in general. Oh, you mean? Oh, you're talking about the actual portraits in each of the panels. Yes, sir. Oh, I thought you meant the the white trim was actually on skins itself. No. Okay. No, like in the middle, you'll see a white buffalo, and like okay. toward the bottom apron, you'll see um, you'll see two white snakes. Ah. And throughout the piece, you'll see like a white horse, two white horses to the sides, and okay. Some other white animals. So he wanted to keep with the like there's a white owl. And yeah. He wanted to keep with the white theme. Very cool. So very very cool. Very talented. he will be missed. Yes. Now let's talk about a little bit about the background. Uh, the, the, uh, again, it, it almost looks like he's, he's in a forest or a surreal, but you've got numbers and all, anything significant there with the ninth, because of the Ninth Ward? Is that yes, what we're yes, bringing sir. out to play? See, but a lot of people not knowing who he is uh -huh. and, and where he's sure, he from. Gives, so it's like right in your face, he's from the Ninth Ward, he was the big chief. 
So it's giving the solidification identification for him. Yes. And how about the frame on here? We got a great looking frame here. Is that something you've done or is that? Yeah, this is also another um, recycled, reclaimed Cypress frame that I Cypress made. frame. And what, what color? Is it multiple layers or what do you have a paint um, on there? It really brings a, out the uh, look. It's just a solid, like a big lime green. Lime green. So color. it really works well with the background and reconnects to the actual uh, yellows and all that are in the uh, that are in the headgear and stuff like that. So there you go, folks. Um, we all are collecting nowadays. Uh, ever since, I guess, Treme has really brought the um, the big chiefs and uh, the uh, Indians to prominence nowadays. So they've become a very collectible item. Not that they weren't before, but I think the prominence of them and preeminence of them now is, is so important that this would be a, just a great, great piece. Okay, and uh, when we said these are on, didn't ask, are these, uh, we don't have acrylic, are they on canvas or are they on wood or different different media? They're, they're all on canvas. Canvas, okay, yes. excellent. And what size did we say this was about? This is 40 by 40. Nice size. And we called it the name of the chief or how did you call um, it? It's Big Chief Rudy. That's Big the, Chief Rudy. That's the title. Excellent, excellent. Okay, let's move it along, see if we're continuing the same vein. Let's see what our next one is and we'll uh, pick it up from here. Okay, now we've got, uh, oh wow. So here we've got another second line going on. Uh, it looks, I think, different than the, the one we free of. Great big father. This is really attractive. Let's start, oh my goodness, and look as we pull back. What a great frame. This is really adding another whole dimension to the painting. Let's talk about it again. We've got acrylic uh, on canvas. Yes, sir. Um, the painting itself is about what size, not the, the frame. Any the, idea? The painting itself is 20 by 20. Okay, and then we're bringing it out about how much more with the frame because we got a um, nice. You're bringing frame. about five inches on five the frame. Five inches more. Let's talk about the subject matter there. That's that is beautiful. That magnificent uh, rose bud. I guess it's a rose. Uh, and is there anyone in particular different in the uh, second line lead leadership? Just just leadership. Okay. There's no one in particular. Okay. And this was for any, uh, any particular festive occasion or just second lining? Well, actually, Bob, um, I, I moved away from New Orleans for, um, for college. I actually, oh, you didn't tell us that. Yeah, I actually um, attended um, LSU in Baton Rouge for oh. four years. And um, I, ended up at, I ended up staying out there for longer than I hoped to for. So uh -huh. That happened to this, a lot of people post-Katrina, and some of them still there, but go ahead. Yeah, well... This was more of a homecoming thing for me. You okay. know, I kind of emerged myself back into New Orleans. So this was culture. your rebirth. Exactly, exactly. Excellent. Well, it's a great look. And let's talk about the frame. How do you, uh, that's great looking design. You see stars. What are the, I don't know, the fly, are those additional flowers? What else do we have working on that great, great frame? Okay, well, this frame, once again, is made out of, this is actually made out of recycled heart pine. Okay. Um, what it is, it's just a, a play on a big shot soda, soda drink. Ah, soda can. So, kind of just use that that motif and uh -huh. that feel to give give that paint that extra pop that I, I wanted to give. I love it, and like I said, I I see kind of in it, those greens and all. To me, it looks like a continuation of the flowers, like stems and and uh, the whole network there. So it really adds dimension to it. Really great. And one question, I'm really going to throw a left curve here. We didn't talk about before. Approximately, since these all uh, uh, got substantial, especially this one, a substantial size frame, how much do these weigh? I noticed, noticed bringing some of them up and setting it up, they do have some poundage. Do you have any idea what some of the weights on these would be? Especially the heavier ones like this might be. Um, so probably they're not too heavy. Okay. Be between three and five pounds. Five pounds. Oh, that's, that's, that's not bad. Maybe it's just me because I'm old and weak and I just seemed heavier than that. <laughs> but, but this one really, I think this one... Of the ones we've seen, this is really contempo. It's, you know, I think it's way out there as opposed to just the wonderful poster, which was so traditional and so accurate for representation of the festival. Here we have that welcoming and all this junk, but also done in a real a lively spirit. So to carry it onto the frame, I think, was a, just a phenomenal idea. Okay, let's go ahead. We're talking, folks, to Kenneth Scott, Jr., uh, he, as you can see, he works in uh, a lot of acrylics and has, uh, is fascinated, obviously, with the musical culture here in New Orleans. Not that any of us aren't, so we're really glad to see some of these representations. And we'll be giving more details about where you can see again a little later. But let's go ahead and move on. I think it's our fourth one, our fifth one. Let's see what we've got coming up. Okay. Oh. 
I'm hoping we come into number four. Is that right? There we go. Now, this is a little darker, folks, but again, uh, once we pull back, let's see. Ah, wow. Ah. Now, this is one, again, I have to plead a little ignorance. I'm not familiar with this. If this is a, a local celeb or beyond, I'm not really uh, putting um, my recognition together. So tell us about this particular painting, sir. Okay, this piece is um, titled All By Myself, and this okay. is a portrait of Fast Domino. Oh, that's fast? Yeah, that's facts. Wow. What about the under a little bit younger there? Actually, this was pretty recent. This was probably in the early 2000s, maybe. Really? Maybe. Has he lost a lot of weight since uh, probably, huh? Yeah, he's lost it. Oh, he's okay. Lost so that's why he looks. And, what, and what, give us a little more detail of what else is on the painting besides his. What is he looking through right there? Um, I want to say that this is just basically like a, a sign that he's making that he's okay. You know, a, a lot of things that happen. Katrina and everything that the devastation that happened across the canal and the ninth ward in his home. Well, I know he yeah, has poor home and the beautiful. We are, I think we all have that vivid uh, um, look of his. I think it was a white piano, maybe turned upside down or sideways. But I, 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 maybe can you be a little more precise on some of the things like the actual thing framing his head? What what is that? That's, anything? that's actually that's actually a hat. He, he a wears, hat. He wears a kind of a captain's hat. It's all, it's it's normally in white. And I decided to actually make it in gold. Yeah, leaf this but time. I'm talking about the oh, okay, the thing that actually goes up, but almost like a pillars of concrete that surrounds him. Not not the thing that's on his head. The thing that frames his head. It's like a frame he's looking through. Do you see what I'm saying? It's gold, and uh, and then there's a white thing behind that that says art. Uh, no fats. F A T S. I got. Oh, it. that's the frame. The, the act, you're talking about the actual frame. No, no. Okay, it's just me. I guess you don't see what I see. I understand you're the artist, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is that a tuba? Was he playing a tuba instrument there? No. No, he's not playing anything. Okay. Well, okay, folks, sorry to mislead the artist, but I, I see something in between fats and the word fats that uh, for some reason uh, it's just my eyes. I can't that, let's let's okay. talk. I see his hand and right behind his hand and whatever that thing is. Right? <laughs> but anyway, he's giving us the okay sign, but that's the key. He survived Katrina. He came back. He's a survivor. Got to, I remember I went to his first concert, I believe, after Katrina, and that was uh, in the St. Charles, uh, Place St. Charles. It was a phenomenal thing in the lobby there. The bit thing it was really well done. Excellent. Uh, let's talk about the size. Did we? I don't think you gave the size on this and whether it's framed. No, it's actually um, it's twenty by twenty. Okay. Um, it's acrylic and gold leaf on canvas. Okay. And it's also framed with um, recycled, reclaimed heart pine. All right, Pam, what colors have we got on that frame? Um, we actually have the colors. I actually got the inspiration from his house, actually. Okay. His house has that pink and kind of turquoise color, and he also has the black and gold. So that's I kind of mimicked his house colors I to, got it. to make the frame. Okay. So you're paying a lot of attention to the detail that most of us would take for granted. So, excellent. And what, do we have a name for this other than Fats? Um, it's it? called All By Myself. All, actually, that's right, All By Myself. Well, uh, that's a great one. But uh, really interesting because he looks very introspective there and like he's curious. Um, I don't know what else to say there, but it's not the usual. I mean, it's a smile, but it's not just your ordinary smile. So I think it's, it's part of that whole thing, knowing what he's going through and, and still come back strong. So let's move on to our next one, I think, number five. Let's see what else we got, what Ken's going to show for us and see if we're still keeping in the vein of the uh, music, musical uh, of New Orleans. And we, what do we have up, coming up? All right. Oh, we go. oh, my goodness. Oh, this is the one that <clears throat> I love what we call monumental paintings. And monumental, uh, well, my old monumental art where it's oversized. And even though this piece is not oversized, per se, compared to the other pieces of your work. The intensity of the close-up really makes it uh, just gargantuan. It makes it seem to be much taller. Uh, this, uh, to me, this, uh, and we're going to let you tell us, of course, I think we all know who it is, but it almost, it's almost like the uh, perennial icon of the, uh, the great clown face that we always remember our local Pontchartrain beach. Uh, or it's, it's just an amazing, amazing piece because um, it, it, I told him it's almost scary. You don't want to say that because I mean that's that's not offensive. But the important thing is, 
so oversized. It's just really, just really out there. And the detail on the eyes, the teeth, the nose are just superb. So tell us about who this is and your idea here. Okay, this is actually, um, the title is Old Louie. Old Louie? Yes, sir. All and right. This, and this is a portrait of Louis Armstrong. Um, it's acrylic on canvas. It, it size is 32 by 30. Okay. And it's also framed in um, recycled, reclaimed hard And what pie. color is the frame on that? Is that it's, black? It, it's black. Black again. Any idea what, what made you want to get so up close and personal to the, on this particular subject? Well, I actually wanted it to look more sculptural, you know. I, I took a good look at Louis Armstrong one day, and I'm like, man, you know, his features are so profound. I, yes. I wanted to capture that three-dimensional quality of his face. And, um, I mean, I just wanted people to know, look, that's him. That, that well, I, him. yeah, I think you've uh, done a dynamite job. I think that was an excellent observation. And, like, it's almost like 3D, you know, that's what I'm saying. It, it just echoes, I mean, just strikes out of that canvas because of the size and the and the projection you're getting. Like I say, the nose, the cheeks, everything, it's got depth to it as opposed to just laying flat on that canvas. So I think this is a really great, great piece that you have. And uh, not that the others weren't, but I think this is certainly one of my favorite. Okay, well, they have from Satchmo, who's always a favorite. Uh, if you like something like that, I'm sure uh, uh, we can find, I know... Uh, Ken probably is doing a lot of these in multiple issues or uh, different variations. So uh, if you want to see musicians on on the wall, whether it's in your office, at home, this is obviously the place to go. And uh, as you can see up there, his website, as we mentioned, is Halo Fine Art. Not hello, halofineart.com. So you can see, again, re revisit and maybe better pictures of these same paintings plus get details how to contact him should you want to see anything that he has available or, and when he's going to be at the next uh, market that we talk about at the end of March. All right, again, the phone number's up there, so if you want to give us a call, don't hesitate. Let's go ahead and move, and we're about halfway through the art right now. So let's see what's coming up now, see if we've got another musician. Ah, there's our traditional floor de lis so that's telling a little bit about the city. But let's see what we've got going here. Ah. As you know, folks, you can see I haven't seen many of these paintings as well, so uh, these are surprising to me just like they are coming to you in the home studio, which makes it even more fun. Okay, this is great. Now, who, who do we have here? Tell us about this. Particular. Um, it's, it's just a, a, one of your average second liners. In a yeah, second, average second liner. Uh, second, okay. second line of parade. Um, this is actually acrylic on gold and, and copper leaf, I'm sorry. Acrylic and copper leaf on canvas. Its size is 18 by 24, and once again, it's framed with reclaimed and recycled heart pine. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the copper leaf. I had never heard of I mean, I'm sure any kind of metal, just again, silver, zinc. Is that uh, the floor de lis, or are we using it in more places? It's in that? more places. It's in the floor de lis. It, um, it borders the Let's sash. Let's see if we get a close up of that for the folks. There we go. It borders the sash. Um, it also outlines the clouds, the roses in the back. You actually see it in his shirt. It's just a little touch everywhere, basically. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so, and why did you think copper on this particular one? What well, I actually thought mind? copper was a, a a great color to complement the turquoise suit he has on. Yeah. You okay. know, copper once it's patina, it actually makes that turquoise color. So, I thought that would. I understand. Good, yeah, a, a when it gets weathered, uh, yeah. or being outdoor, the rain or the wind will also change it to color, which is a beautiful color. Exactly. Exactly. And I love those greens. I mean, the vibrancy of the light. I don't know whether that was the sun or what you're projecting there, but I mean to really bring the contrast to define the uh, the the individual. Uh, it's just magnificent, and to coordinate that with the frames. I mean, frame. It's almost like what we call gallery wrap, which we'll talk about later, because even though it's not. Uh, the frame just blends in so nicely. It just looks like a continuation of the painting as opposed to putting some contrast or anything like that. It really is a, a, a phenomenal coloration and, and blend on that. And now, uh, did we say what size this was? I know you said it was canvas and it's, on it's 18 uh, acrylic. By, 18 by 24. 18 by 24, okay. And the name on this one? 
This is smelling like roses. Smelling like roses, okay. Do we have any roses in there? No, huh? did we? Uh, his sash is actually completely oh. covered in roses. Ah, okay. And well, the, that's, and we the, didn't describe that. So that, I see it now down those, those two layers at the bottom there, beautiful, yeah, running the oh. circular part. Oh, beautiful. And beautiful. the background is actually roses as well. The background? Yeah. The, the, all that green right there like that, that's all the roses, like rose petals? Uh, it's actually um, it's actually like a rose a couple of rosebuds and, and other petals behind okay. him. So you get that really phenomenal. So you've exaggerated those, to, but then to complement what's showing on his uh, on his uni on his clothing uniform now. Huh? Correct. Excellent. All right. Well, let's move on and uh, we'll see if we got another musician in in tow because uh, it looks like we're on the on the uh, New Orleans music musical train. What else we got here? Wow, okay, wow, now this one is so vivid. Wow, it's really great. Now this one I would think is, regardless of the uh, topic, this one to me, just like the other one, is so contempo, I think, because of the use, use, usage of so many vibrant colors. Let's tell us about it, but this is really magnificent. Tell us about this one, please, Ken. Okay, this, the title of this piece is Smelling Like Roses. It's, um, I thought the other one was Smelling Like Roses. I'm, I'm sorry. This is actually called Pretty in Pink. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you're trying to confuse me. I'm throwing me left curves. Pretty in Pink. Okay, Pretty tell us uh, a little bit about it with the subject matter. Okay, um, the size is 18 by 24 as well. Um, it's acrylic and silver leaf on canvas. And what about the subject matter? Who is this person? Um, that's no, the first thing we want to get. No Mardi Gras Indian in particular, just a Mardi Gras Indian. Okay, so this is one of your imagination, or you think this is pretty accurate in depicting a, co you know, a costume that you saw? Um, I actually saw a costume similar, but it actually was a different color, and um, I wanted this to be pink, so. Absolutely beautiful. And, of course, he's holding a wonderful green, lime green tambourine. Is that right? Yes, sir. And then let's talk about the background. We've got vivid blues. I mean, it's, and those blues kind of become grays and blues within his costume. At first, I thought this was a lady Indian. I had no disrespect for my bad eyes. And I was saying I didn't know if we had any female Indian tribes yet, but I'm hoping that, that'll be something if we have it. But let's talk about that background, those, those wonderful blues. What, what are we representing there? Anything in particular? Well, I actually wanted the background to kind of blend in with him okay. itself. And the title being pretty in pink, I wanted it to be more about the actual suit. Okay. And um, well, how about the frame now? Bring us up to the frame. Well, the frame is actually a, a hot iridescent pink. And, ah, um, so it's hot pink. And once again, it's made out of the recycled hot pine that I'm. But then, you, are, do you have uh, that that color striation, that differential, those shadowing? Is that any form of pattern? Is that just? Something you did, or is that just from well, painting? Well, as far as the background, um, it's a technique that I'm, I'm working on. I actually let gravity make the actual marks. And on top of that, then you see more of a floral scene. You see a dragonfly, some butterflies, some flowers, some leaves, some tulip bulbs. So wow. it's more of a floral type type background. Yeah, I love flowers. So then, it's, and so... In this technique, you're putting the colors on and you're letting them drain down. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Cool. Very, very cool. And that's on the frame, too, or just on the background? On um, the frame as well. Really, really done well. So, And we said, what size was this about? I know you said it right up front, but I it's, forget. It's 18 by 24. Lovely. So that's pretty one, much one of your uh, standard kind of um, sizes. And... Uh, so here's one, like I say, this one and the, um, I've forgotten that other one, with the really way out um, uh, framework, I think would really be phenomenal because you're not only taking, you know, a subject that's past, present, but really bringing it into, the, to me, giving it a futuristic look. This one's specifically much more than the other. The other one's kind of more of a, just a, a great overall, but this is really futuristic, you know, even in the size of, of the, uh, of the Indian, he's thin and projecting upward. So it, I think the, the whole look is very ethereal and to me very kind of futuristic looking, but still with the detail of his face bringing it home to reality. Really, really a nice piece. And that's pretty in pink. You sure now it's not smelling like rose. Pretty in that's, pink. That's correct. Pretty in pink. Okay, <laughs> good deal. All right, Ken, let's take a look at a, another one and uh, we'll see where we're going. Hopefully we've got, oh, we do have a lot of time left, so. 
here we go. You're going to have to speak a little more. Come on. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, my goodness, this is great. I love this one. Now, this is real, real today, uh, as far as I'm concerned. This is, a, this is a present, present, present painting. Talk us about this one, please, Ken. Okay, well, the title of this piece is I Hear Winton. I am? I Hear Winton. Oh, I Hear Winton, all right. Yes, sir, and this is actual a portrait of Of course, of that Winton. would be the outstanding Winton Marsalis? That's correct. Okay. That's and correct. Tell us a little bit more about it. Um, once again, it's um, it's acrylic and gold leaf. Mm -hmm. um, the size is 18 by 24, and once again, it's framed by myself with recycled um, lumber. Okay, let's talk a little bit more details about the painting. Okay, well, we've gone on the specifics, and we do that each time. But uh, like, first of all, was this inspired by? Are any of these inspired from concerts or from photographs you had? Or how, how did you get this? You know, come to this look. Well, I actually, um, I actually use multiple references when I, I do a piece. And once again, I told you about the music earlier, how the, right. music, how the actual music inspires me. So listening to Winton, I, I actually say, I actually hear him. You know, when a person okay. say they hear something, right? like, man, I actually hear him. And from his music and the, the power of his trumpet playing, I was able to come up with this color scheme. Wow. That, you know, I, I'm just amazed at that. I mean, I, just, I think it's a wonderful gift you have, and it's certainly um, being expressed beautifully, so I certainly can't contradict it. I guess because it's so mystical that we're trying to, trying to quantify or qualify something that, that's impossible, that's only in your head based on what you hear. But uh, I, I, like I said, I think the, the colors that you bring out, and this... To me, it almost looks like a photograph, a color photograph. That's uh, literal, I think, the, uh, just like the expression on the big satchmo, same thing here. Now, we don't have that necessarily that depth because they're not that close, but it really almost looks like a photograph that you've colorized, that you've painted on, you know, because you've done such a great job with the uh, portrait of uh, the face, you'll start to that, I mean, it really looks almost like a color photograph. So that's congratulations to you. Um, but anything else about about it that you could talk about? Well, actually, this piece was actually the first piece I started with the, um, I told you how I let gravity basically make right. the background. Did so you have a name for that? Or are, you, are you going in? I mean, <laughs> not really. you're defining it, I mean, I think you merely need to coin the word for it. But anyway, go ahead. Not, not really, but... So this is the first one that you actually experimented with or developed that procedure, yeah. that process. Yes, sir, and I actually flipped it. Uh, multiple times upside down. You'll see drips coming from the bottom up. You'll see it coming from the bottom down. you see it from the top down. So, Well, it, it doesn't seem to, um, you know, distort. It doesn't seem to distort the painting at all. That's what's so cool. Uh, um, nah. What I really like also is the magnificent detail in his suit. And I don't know if any of that is a result of what you're talking about, but the lines, the creases, the, uh, uh, the detail there is so specific. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why it almost looks like a photograph that you've taken. In the old days, they would take photographs and actually paint color before, before color became a, uh, you know, a, a normal process in painting, in photography that they actually would add a, an artist. I know a friend who used to have a studio, a local, very famous studio here in the city. And that's what we would do, to enhance portraiture of, of, of people who wanted their painting. Instead of just taking the black and white, they would take it and add color to it to add that dimension. And to me, that's almost what, what you've achieved here. So it's really just a, a really neat thing, but at the same time, just phenomenal detail. So again, congrats to you there. All right, let's take a look at another one and see if we've got another musician coming up. Hopefully so, because we're running the gamut. Um, we're gonna be, people are going to say, well, who's next? Ah, my goodness, the queen of local soul. Uh, the lady of New Orleans is still going. Uh, I was so fortunate to see her with the reopening of the Joy. Uh, what was that, a couple of months ago? It was fabulous. She gave a great concert, and she's there giving back to our city all the time in so many wonderful endeavors. And we're speaking about, of course, the fabulous Irma Thomas. Tell us about this. I grew up with Irma. I mean, when we, 
in high school and college. We would have her almost every weekend at a different dance. She and Ernie Cato and a few of Benny Spellman, a few of the ones that were legends here in, uh, in our city. And she grew up with us. We were all around the same age, and she, uh, she just would belt our heart out every, every weekend, a real trooper. So tell us about Irma's painting here. Okay, well, Irma is, the title of this piece is Soul Queen, which she is the Soul Queen of New Orleans. To, um, it measures 16 by 20. Um, it is also acrylic and gold leaf on canvas. Um, once again, it's framed in a recycled and reclaimed material. Okay, let's talk about some of the gold leaf again, because it's interesting to see. I mean, we can guess at it, and you don't have to name every spot, but... Just give us some ideas so we can see how that, and then we're going to have our cameraman focus in on those areas to show how dynamic, because from a distance you might not see that, okay? But as you get closer and closer to the piece, the use of the metal, the foil, really adds a dimension to it. So tell us, is it in the nose at all? No, actually no. it's in that spotlight up okay. to the upper right. Um, it's in her earrings and the microphone. And we're talking about gold leaf here. Yes, sir. That is gold leaf. Okay, so we're looking at the mi in the micro and the earrings. Yes, sir. Why don't we get a little closer to the earring? Let's see how we can tell. Let's see how, how close we can get. Because uh, the important thing is not an, a distraction. You know, it's not something that. Uh, but you see the dimension eh, as you go. When you get close, you can see it's almost like filigree. And again, that's because the gold leaf or whatever leafing you do actually sometimes crumbles and stays on the piece as you as you're taking it off so if you think of a real thin layer of foil that's the deal there so it gives a tremendous dimension uh and a um yeah, well dimension is probably the best word so it <clears throat> brings it above the flat level gives it something <coughs> that really brings out the dimension and see again in the my in the uh, spotlight which normally you wouldn't see at all you just think it's a flat light but once again there, it's giving just uh, depth and dimension of the best things they're talking about. And you said, what size was this again? This, is, six, this is 16 by 20. And 16 by 20. That's the standard size, folks. But he's already got it framed for you, so you see you have no, no problem there. And we're calling it Soul, Soul Queen. Queen. Yes, sir. Excellent. Couldn't pick a better title. All right, let's move on a little bit more. Don't forget, we're talking to Kenneth Scott, Jr. And if you have any questions, a native who's... Uh, appearing at a lot of our uh, art festivals as well as hanging some things in local galleries. Uh, don't forget his website, halofineart.com. Let's go ahead, but obviously you can see he's a specialist in musical talent here in New Orleans. And what better idea is, you know, we keep our musicians on our restaurant show, but uh, here we got them, not in the flesh, but certainly in a beautiful, uh, wonderful thing that you can take home to your office or to your home and uh, just show everyone uh, your pride and joy in our city. And certainly when you have visitors, they're going to really want to know more about the detail of any of these paintings. All right, let's take a look and see what we got next. Who who could be here hiding that we haven't seen? And somebody else? You want to tell us something about this, Kenneth, as we pull back, or are you waiting to see as well? Okay, this, this is actually, remember I told you, I, I didn't live here for some time. And right. Moving you went home. up to BR. Yeah. I don't want to say unfortunately, but I'm back home now. Right. And I, like I said, I submerged myself back in New Orleans culture. Exactly. This is uh, beignets. This is called Fast Break. Fast Break. Yeah. Which is a spin on breakfast, of course. There you go. This right. is um, my interpretation of like a jazz musician. He's getting ready for a set. You know, he plays the drums, he plays, he smokes a cigarette, he's getting a plate of beignets and some coffee, some cafe au lait. Um, this is 16 by 20 as well, and this is also acrylic on canvas with gold leaf, okay. and the frame is actually recycled and reclaimed hot pine. Okay, we're going to stop you there and maybe come back to it because we do have a caller. Caller, uh, what's your name, where are you calling from, and welcome to the show. What can we answer for you? Hi, my name is Bruce Davenport Jr. Okay. I'm sorry about that. No problem. Calling from New Orleans. All right. What well, can we answer for you? I'm a big you? fan of the artists that you have. Our artist, Kenneth Scott Jr.? Yeah. What about yeah, I like him? like his work. You like his work? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm, um, I'm inspired by, by, by what 
I didn't, uh, the subject that he used. So inspired that you're going to take up painting, or you already are an artist yourself? Yeah, I'm an artist myself, but uh-huh. I like to collect good work. Ah, well, don't we all? I understand that. <laughs> I, I just had a show at Norma for Prospect 2. Oh, congratulations. Now, you... Uh, oh, well, thank you. Uh, do you specialize in uh, New Orleans musicians, as Kenneth has, or is that another subject you, you're all over? What, what do you do? Like more of the, the marching bands. The bands? Yeah, like the high schools in New Orleans. Great, uh, great. The West Bank. Excellent. Excellent. Universities. Well, uh, like you know, don't... Ha- and grambling. Mm-hmm. Well, don't hesitate to email me. Uh, you can see I'll give you my website now. If you're from, since obviously I don't know whether it's your first time watching or you've seen the show before, but if if you'll go Bob B O B at sign R R E V U E, not R E V I U W, two R's E V U E dot com. Tell me okay. again. Remind me about about your subject matter. We do have okay. uh, we do have still openings in the latter half. I think we're filled to May. But summer and the fall's coming, and we, we book our calendar all year. So uh, if you can refer me to a site where I can see some of your work, then and you'd like to come on and bring, uh, what we do is ask you to bring 14 pieces to our studio on the last Wednesday of a month. And we'll okay. confirm all that to you, and we'd love to uh, carry this a little further for you. But uh, anything else you want to talk about about our artist today? Well, I want to know, what, you know, what um, other places would he be showing his work? You know, do you have like a gallery or okay. do you have an agent or some type, somebody? Well, there's two things. One, do, do, do you have a computer, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully you, you'll get the uh, website, first of all, which we've been showing, and that's www.fine, if I, I mean, halo, excuse me, sorry, H A L O. F I N E A R T, singular, halofineart.com. So if you go to that one, you'll see all of these paintings. It will be any others on there, but just the ones we're looking at today. I, I updated monthly. So. Okay. So there you're going to get a feel for anything new that he'd be doing. And as he mentioned, uh, he's got, um, he has a, a group show, but unfortunately it ends today. But he will be appearing at the Algiers, if you're fortunate enough to live on the West Bank or don't mind traveling. Uh, art Festival the last weekend of April. Is that right? Or March? March. Last weekend of March. The last Saturday in March and the first day Sunday of April. So you can catch him there in the flesh, okay? Uh-huh. Okay, okay. All right, no problem. Sure enough, we'll appreciate that. Well, listen, thank you very much. I know all of us here appreciate you watching the show, and I know that both is. I told him that uh, we don't get a lot of calls on Wednesday, but every once in a while we get a real art lover out there who will call and pass along some comments to the artist. So I know he's pleased. You want to say anything to the gentleman? Uh, hey, Bruce, man. How you doing? Oh, you know him. Oh, yeah, okay. All oh, oh, right. What's up, people? How you doing? Okay. Right. Good. You made me proud of sitting up there with your work, Sean, like that. Thank you, my brother. Uh, all right, Bruce. Like I say, don't hesitate to contact me should you like to uh, maybe appear on the show later this year. All right. We're going to move on forward because... It. We do need to continue going uh, through the rest of uh, Ken's portfolio to make sure we uh, finish on time. Because I think we've got about three or four left. Let's see. Let's go back to the last one real quickly because I know I rushed Ken uh, to get that call. And it was interesting. I'm just going to make a little minor comment here. And then unless he wants to say more, we'll move on. This is our first real departure from actually a portrait of a musician. But it's interesting how once again... He related with something that had you not seen his historical work, I would have never put together with necessarily with a musician, per se. I would have just said, well, here's someone, uh, just a great-looking beignet, but right on tool, you got the instrument, you've got the smoke, which, of course, is so traditional, unfortunately, among our musicians and also some of our chefs. And you've got our local cafe au lait or, or strong um, coffee, along with an order, a plate of beignets. So here, if you're not into the portraits, but you still want to represent New Orleans, again, you got a great... And one more time, the size. This was a little smaller, was it not? Yeah, this is 16 by 20. 16 by 20. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, and uh, we certainly appreciate that call. Let's see what we have uh, coming up. Okay? We should... Uh, oh, wow. Here we go. 
Well, it looks like we're taking that uh, into, uh, we're expanding on that, on the one we just saw. Tell us about this one, please. Okay, the, the title of this piece is Fast Break 2. Fast Break 2, okay. Um, the first one was so popular amongst my peers and friends, um, they say you should come up with another one. So this is this is the second one. Um, it's acrylic, acrylic and gold leaf on canvas. Um, it measures 16 by 20 as well, and it's also framed with recycled and reclaimed hard pine. Okay, let's go with it. So uh, again, we said uh, someone you got a lot of feedback. Well, it shows you that maybe you should. Do a little more than just, I mean, not that you're not doing justice to all of our musicians. You're doing a wonderful historical um, situation of chronologic all our music, but at the same time, everybody likes diversity. So here's one where you can still keep your relationship, but without focusing on the musician. And I, once again, I think this one is just dynamite. That vibrant red on the uh, framework. Just phenomenal, and uh, I, I can't. Uh, and, I'm, and my bad eyes. The right side in the subject matter. What? Uh, what's on the right side of the painting above the uh, beignets? Not. That's the, actually um, just a sugar shaker. Like a sugar shaker. Oh, okay, uh -huh. on a typical table. Uh, then when you had one of the uh, Cafe du Monde or one of the beignet places, huh? Yes, sir. And we said this was 16 by 20 or smaller. It's 16 by 20 as okay. well. And again, the framework. You uh, done some vibrant red and. Uh, and any gold leaf or anything? No, no, I don't see that unless you... Um, there's gold leaf um, there sprinkled throughout the piece itself. Okay, okay, um, it's just basically as outlines. And All right, well, we got a couple more. So let's try and get those in before uh, we fit, wrap up with... Uh, again, we have Kenneth Scott Jr., uh, native, of course, which we love, uh, painter, artist, doing working in uh, acrylics and doing... Uh, now here's one, I think this is the first one where he's going outside of our territory, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, everybody recognizes this gentleman, but go ahead and tell us who it is and what's our title on this one. Okay, the title of this piece is Living in America. This is and a... I think, wasn't that from one of his songs? Yeah. No? That song e title? Exactly. And of course, we're talking about the fabulous uh, King of Soul, and that's the uh, illustrious James Brown. Yes, huh? sir. You're correct. Tell us a little bit about this inspiration, because I think you've hit it spot on by putting the flag in the background, et cetera. Tell us a little bit more about the inspiration here of the subject. Well, uh, it's going to sound weird, but I got the inspiration from watching Rocky. From Rocky? Rocky the, Rocky movie. the movie. Yes. Okay. Um, I know he was a part of that soundtrack, that Living in right. America was in that soundtrack. Exactly. He was part of it. That's exactly right. And I just... I just wanted to capture him in his glory, you know. During his during his heyday, he was the man. I mean, oh, you definitely. Now I have to admit. So when you were watching the movie and you heard the actual song, is that when you committed to do the painting, or did it was just sometime what, after? Well, this painting reminds me of that for for some strange okay. reason. Okay, but, but that actual, was the connective. Yeah, but the actual music, the song itself. Um, Living in a man. Basically, Excellent. and which size do we? Again, we have acrylic on canvas, and which size do we have here? Um, this one is actually 26 by 30. Okay, that's an unusual size for you. But and let's talk about the frame here, because this this one you've gone, uh, you haven't gone the other way where we blend in. Of course, it'll be hard to be blending with the with the stripes, stars and stripes. But tell us uh, how you came up with the coloration on the uh, frame. Um, this is actually a cream color, whereas he has on all white. All white, right. And there's white and a flag and the stars, of course. So you just didn't want to, you wanted to kind of go that route, but not take away from the vibrancy of his white uniform, right? Exactly, exactly. Excellent. And this is um, made out of recycled beadboard, which is still another pine. Um, oh, okay. Pine oh, yeah, frame. beadboard. Everybody knows that. In the old homes, like we in the Victorian old homes, that was used extensively. So that's that's an interesting difference, and I'm sure... When you get up close to the frame, you can not only feel but also see that that uh, uh, all that effect of the, of the beadboard. Because really cool. Okay, so that was our only so far musician outside of the local. And I think we've got we've got one more maybe. Let's see if we got more. Uh, is that it? Oh, we, oh yeah, here we go. Now this one is way out there because folks, wait till you see this. Uh, so we started the departure by moving outside of our local musicians. But here's one, again, staying and hitting uh, the pop idol. But what's so unique about this painting, what a fabulous profile. Again, like 
is it's done in a, a circle. It's an oval painting. So let's talk about his, the illustrious Michael Jackson. Let's tell, tell us a little bit more detail on this one and the specifics of the painting itself. Okay, well, this one, um, the title is Heal the World. Okay. Um, it's actually acrylic on canvas right. uh, with silver leaf. Oh, silver leaf. That's um, good with the blues. It's, it's made on a, a, it was actually stretched on a handmade stretcher, a round stretcher. Okay. It, it, it measures 36 inches in circumference. Okay. So a nice three foot size. Great. Um, and the subject matter was just based off of, I actually painted this right after he passed away. Oh, really? Yeah, so this was, is very current then. So I'm, I was a big fan, and um, well, I, I still am. And uh, all Heal, of us Heal the World is the, is the title. So It's a great title. Uh, and what's unique about this one, I think this was the only one that is actually gallery wrapped, or maybe there was one other one we talked about. It should be again. Let's talk about what is gallery wrapping, and uh, why did you choose to do that other than perhaps the difficulty of getting an oval uh, frame? But let's talk about gallery wrap. Well, for this piece, um, I think a gallery wrap was, was, was actually a great choice. Um, gallery wrapping is just basically extending the actual canvas around the stretcher, um, which basically there's no need for a frame. Um, the color complements the actual piece. Um, it's about probably about two two inches deep right and um it makes the piece more contemporary you know my, my work is more of a contemporary spin on traditional traditional art so this is just a this is another way of presenting a piece and hanging it well I, I i certainly compliment you on this not only did we save not the best for the last because your first one was phenomenal too but all of your paintings just great but to take our legend pop legend and uh, Giving this kind of tribute, I think, is just really justifiable. And uh, as I explain all the time, I think gallery wrap is so important to today's art collective because many times the young people who are collecting don't have maybe the funds to, to put an extensive collection together. So here's something, and not only that, these large size pieces like Kenneth has specialized in uh, are amazing because they become the wallpaper. In other words, you don't need other sconces, you don't need anything else in the background. You just got a solid color wall and you're hanging these paintings on that and it's, it, just, it just really brings them into, into pr prominence and so therefore makes you a collector even if you only have the one piece. And what better way for the tribute for all of us who are tremendous fans than to, than to do Michael Jackson and do it in this unusual circular way. So most of us have circular mirrors up, but what a neat thing if you have a, a contemporary a music room or something like that where you can put this in and uh, I think it would just be a dynamite. All right, um, I think uh, that's certainly all that we have today. Uh, Ken was nice enough to bring to us. Let's, uh, let's review again a little bit. As we mentioned, he is a native, and you can uh, see his website. We want you to encourage you to see the website, and I've kind of brutalized that, so we'll go over it one more time. www.halofineart, H-A-L-O-F-I-N-E-A-R-T. Okay, we got to go. Thanks again, Ken. We'll see you at the restaurants next time, and uh, happy Leap Day. Thank you.